Can I start by getting some team news, if I may? Um, How was Billy Clark progressing? Yeah, Billy's um, been training with us. Um, so it's nice to get him back out there. He's a, he's a good character. Um, so positive news on him. Um, but again, there's there's another day to go in the preparation. So we'll, we'll see where we are at the end of it. Is that a case of just seeing how he reacts to a full week of training and then, of course, being cautious about bringing him back into the first team fold? Yeah, exactly. I think what we don't want to do is for him to come back and, and you know, for him to be re-injured. Um, so I think, again, just with the kind of people that we are and uh, as a club, we're all trying to look after these players, yeah. Harry Pritchard, I know he's had some reoccurring problems with his back. Yeah, we're, we're just trying to finalise um, exactly what's going to happen with with Pritch, uh, but until until we're here, um, um, I can't really say. What, what is the situation with Pritchard in that respect? Is it a case where he's going to have to have some surgery potentially to sort this out, or is this just something that he's going to continuously have to, to put up with? No, it's been, I said it, um, I think maybe a, a month ago or something, where uh, he had a, an injury um, which he brought to the club, if, if you like, and you know a lot of players have them. Mm. Uh, it's just trying to get down to the bottom of it. Um, but he has been training, um, and then he sort of dropped out of training, and we're just trying to find the right solution for him at the minute. So um, we're just trying to gather as much, as much info as we can. How close is Bryce? Yeah, he's, he's promising. I know it's we've probably been saying two, three weeks for a while. Um, again, we've people changing their recoveries and, and things happen. Um, but again, when when Bryce does return, um, it'll be it'll be safely. Are you in a position at all to give a timescale on Lee Novak? I know that you were waiting to try and finalise details on that. Um, I think it's with with what he's had done. He's looking to settle down, and it has now, and he's just. Um, sort of being advised by the physios. So I wouldn't like to put a time on it. Um, I think everybody's different. Everybody's body's recovering in different ways. And um, I think get a few past a few more weeks and, and maybe we can give a day. One final one, just Zelly. I know that he's a, a long-term absentee. Do you expect him to return at all this season or is his season done? Um, again, it's, it's how he... How he gets better, you know, from from the injury, um, it's not straightforward all the time. Um, but again, it, it's it's kind of been a, a bad one for him this season, where he's had a reoccurrence, if if you like, um, a slight reoccurrence. So uh, we'll see, we'll see where he has. We're hopeful that he's going to be back sooner rather than later. Mm. In terms of building up fitness back, Richard O'Donnell, of course, uh, been on the bench for the last few games. Is it a case now with Richard and Sam that? It's playing for the shirt as opposed to Richard building his fitness back up. Yeah, I think um, we obviously Richard's injury and he came back and had a speedy recovery, which was brilliant. Uh, but Sam's also performing well um, and getting clean sheets and, and doing his part. So, you know, we're the type of people where, um, you know, if Sam's doing a good job, then we can't really change it. But again, Richard's got loads of experience and he, he wants to play as well. So it's fair to say that at this moment in time, Sam Hornby is Bradford City's number one. Uh, at this moment in time, yeah, because he's um, he's got his chance and he's he's keeping his shirt. But when it's brilliant, because you've got two two really good and talented keepers where they keep pushing each other, so um, they they both be on the toes. That's for sure. Does that help you at all? Plan uh, long term as well, because I realise he's out of a deal in the summer. Uh, does that give you something to think about in that respect? With of course Richard's contract lasting until the end of next season? Um, I th- I, again, I think um, we, we like both of the, of the goalkeepers. Um, and, you know, I think with contract talks, they'll probably um, start, you know, towards the end of the season uh, from now and we'll, and we'll start to chat more in depth. But again, we've got two talented guys and who are working hard to, to be number one. Looking back on Tuesday night's performance, I'm sure you'll have watched it back uh, once the dust has settled somewhat. What are your reflections on the game, Connor? Yeah, I thought it was a it was a, a performance where maybe we started off a little bit slower than we have previously. Um, but you know, at half time we sort of mentioned a few things and and made some and some good changes, which changed the dynamics a little bit. And um, obviously it's tough with all the games that come thick and fast. And you know, I felt I felt the changes really changed the game. But overall, they came with a game plan, and that was to, you know, nick a point or potentially get one on the break. 
So we had to be patient. We had to uh, provoke them and, and try and, and try and use the spaces that were available, but they made it tough for us. So um, it was brilliant to, to get the win in the end. It's been referenced a few times since the result, the way that Ori approached the game. Respectful of your recent form, I think it would be fair to say, wouldn't it, that they've gone there to try and sit back and, and frustrate you. In the end, you've been able to find the answer, but they're a reflection of, of how the league perceives you in your form right now. Yeah, obviously, it's um, people do the homework and they've seen us and they potentially thought that, you know, coming away from home to Bradford uh, in form is... And, and they maybe looked at our team and thought, you know, we could potentially get them on the counter attack. Um, I'm only sort of guessing here what they they were thinking, but um, I think it's credit to the to the players um, that you know teams are coming here and they and they try to nick a point and they're not trying to get three points. They're, they're coming to ex- expecting a big game. What's it done that kind of result, that kind of performance, grinding it out towards the end of a game? What's that done for the mood and and I suppose the belief in the camp? Yeah, it's, it's fantastic, you know, when when you come off the pitch and, you know, you speak to the guys and, you know, that you can see in their faces that they're absolutely delighted. Um, and we talk about, you know, that that feeling of winning games and how addictive it is. And, and that's why they work so hard throughout the week. So it's, um, it's it was a, a positive day and, and night. And, and obviously coming into the training ground again to, to work to, to, um, to win the next game as well. You've often said uh, over this run that you've been on that, that the mood in the camp naturally has been one that's been positive. But now you've had more time to spend with the players. Are you seeing any further developments in the mood and, and maybe getting at things like fearlessness, character, belief? Are you seeing any further developments in that respect? Yeah, I think a, a lot of those things, you know, the, the players have um, through... Through their development as a as a professional footballer, you know, you, you get into this level, you've got to have some some kind of really tough mental um, attributes. And I think it's maybe as, as winning promotes more confidence, you start seeing them a little bit more. Um, but again, I think when we play and, and I think when you see the team, you, you see people who are going to, who are going to work hard. Um, you know, they're going to feel like underdogs are going to do everything. They're going to outwork everyone. And that's the mentality that we want, you know, ultimately. We've just spoken to um, Elliot Watts. It was a really enlightening conversation, actually. Um, He spoke a lot about how he models his game on certain Premier League professionals at the moment that are active. But he also referenced, Connor, a a conversation that you and Mark had with him after the Crawley game in mid-December. And he said that for him, that 10-minute chat that he had with you guys has been a big turning point for him in his season. And uh, it clearly still rings true what you said that day. What was what was the need for that? Why did you feel you had to, to sit him down and, and have a conversation like that with him? I think Elliot's a, a really big character. Um, you know, if I'm right, he's 20 years old, but, um, you know, he has an influence. Um, he's probably acts beyond his years, if I'm honest, with his leadership skills, et cetera. And he's the type of character that, you know, he does everything right um, around the building, off the um, away from the building, etc. He lives like a, a real pro. So for us, it was to get him in and, and for him to know that <clears throat> we believed in his character and we felt that, you know, he had a, a positive influence on others. So it was to keep that up and, and don't be shy, you know, less confident because of your age or anything. Uh, just keep doing it for, for the team and yourself. How important is it as managers that you identify those leaders within the group? You just said Billy Clark being amongst the players as well. He's a big character. When you see those strengths in individuals, you hone in on those. Yeah, I think, I think it happens naturally as well. Um, you know, we've tried to identify these players and if they're already in the building or, or at other clubs in the, in the window. So uh, the more of them that are going to set the standards and, and really you know, push everybody. Um, And then that's just really positive and that's what we want. The reason I mention that is because I think towards the back end, or sorry, the first half of the season, uh, it was something that was maybe said about Bradford City that they didn't particularly have that midfielder general, for the want of a better phrase, dictating things in the middle of the park. Do you think that that Elliot, okay, yes, 20 years of age, but as we've said already, age is but a number. He can be that kind of player for you in this side. I think he's he's already showing it, um, and I think he was showing it in parts as well throughout the season. Um, maybe that he's just uh, feels really good about himself as, as well at the moment. Um, you know, he's developing as a person as well as a footballer, and 
Um, he's, you know, he feels he feels good at the minute, so for him, it's really positive. We're now in the thick of this hectic schedule that we knew that was coming, and I know that uh, you and Mark have mentioned a number of occasions about capping minutes and being very wary of, of how you rotate the players. I just wonder then, with with that in mind, does that offer a pathway or an opportunity for the likes of Roman Burrell and, and Matty Folds, who we, we haven't really seen since their arrival in January? Yeah, as you know, again, things happen uh, at football clubs where people have injuries and, and things like that, um, and there's a lot of games coming up, so it's kind of tough at the minute for them guys because they're working really hard in training and around in the gym, etc. But because the squad is, is as it is and the team's doing well and the squad's performing well, it's it's hard to just put those people in because then it'd be um, that other people missing out. Um, so they've just got to keep you know, fighting for that chance because it is tough competition. Yeah, how do you keep their spirits up, keep their belief going? Yeah, I think um, ultimately their, their character is really important. Um, that they understand that they're preparing for their chance. Um, and I've spoke about that in the past where, you know, when people are away from the team, they're preparing for that chance because if they maybe go off the boil and when they do get opportunity, they, if they're not doing more than the people that are, are playing and, and around the squad, then they're going to maybe fade away and not and not show the best capabilities. So they're just working hard. On to Walsall on Saturday. Firstly, what have you made of their current situation in the league table? Yeah, obviously we've with the game last night as well, um, and the situation that happened with with the change of managers and, and and things like that. It's 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 you know something that we've we've been looking out at. Um, you know we do our work on on the opposition, and this is a part of it. We want to know as much as we can about Warsaw, but um, they're a good team, you know, a really good team. And you know we watch teams every week who are playing, and they, they surprise you of, of the strengths and the in ways that they can hurt you. So uh, Warsaw is going to be another tough, tough test. I often hear the phrase 1% in football management and how you try and gain little 1% here and there. It is a, is a big 1% for the want of a better phrase. Again, the fact that they played last night and you guys played on Tuesday. Uh, we probably can't use it. Um, <laughs> you know, we've seen play, uh, teams that have maybe played the Wednesday and the other team played the Tuesday and, and they still come out the, on top. You know, the ones that played closer to the game. So I don't think there's a, a perfect formula, if you like, of if you do this, you win or do that. You win. You've got to turn up. You've got to be better than them and you've got to earn your luck as well. So uh, we're not using that as, a, as an excuse. Speaking of your own managerial experience at Bradford City, though, how wary do you have to be of that managerial change and indeed the, the bounce back from that, the buy-in that could be there? Yeah, like you say, it's... It's, it's happened um, here, um, so with with those changes, you know, you you, you sometimes get a, an immediate reaction. It's whether that reaction stays consistent, but again, that that reaction can be there. And coming off a loss, um, where where teams are really up against it, and they have to come back fighting, and and you know, there's no doubt what that will be expecting a, a real tough tough game. 